Hello, dear students. Today we are starting the new model capabilities of the human brain. Open your books at page 69, exercise 1. Before doing the first exercise, let's start with our vocabulary. Listen to the words and write them down. Beat. Capability. Convert. Identify. Invent. React. Sculpt. Now you are to fill the gaps in the text with the words from the lists. Let's check. We experience our emotions in the brain. The physical effect of these emotions helps us react to situations. For example, fear makes our heart beat faster and gets us ready to fight or run away. The brain allows us to enjoy music in lots of ways. When we listen to a piece of music, we can identify the different instruments and the music we hear often has a strong effect on our emotions. The brain allows us to create, understand and learn languages. This process is a lot more complicated than we think. It converts spoken or written symbols into meaning which is passed on to other people. The brain allows us to imagine things that are not real. We can tell stories, paint pictures, sculpt statues and write music. This ability is the reason why we can invent new things. And now let's watch the video and name some more capabilities of the human brain. The human brain. The brain controls your other organs. It regulates pleasure and pain, hunger and thirst, blood pressure and body temperature. It also plays a huge part in determining your personal identity through thoughts, memories and emotions we experience. The physical effect of our emotions helps us react to situations. For example, fear makes our heart beat faster and gets us ready to fight or run away. The brain also allows us to enjoy music in lots of ways. When we listen to a piece of music, we can identify the different instruments and the music we hear often has a strong effect on our emotions. The brain allows us to create, understand and learn languages. This process is a lot more complicated than we think. It converts spoken or written symbols into meaning which is passed on to other people. Using our brains, we can also imagine things that are not real. We can tell stories, paint pictures, sculpt statues and write music. This ability is the reason why we can invent new things. Your brain is an amazing organ. And now let's open the books at page 70. Physical structure of the human brain. Exercise 1. The words below come from the text. What do you think they mean? Let's listen and repeat. Blood pressure. Body temperature. Skull. Hemisphere. Nerve fiber. Neurologist. Synapse. Neuron. Now, let's get acquainted with new words. Listen to them and write down in your vocabularies. Be related to. Be responsible for. Determine. Deal with. Hemisphere. Hunger. Identity. Logic. Organ. Pathway. Play a part. Require. Skull. Syntax. Take over. Tendency. Thirst. Which hemisphere? Left or right of the brain do you think controls? Logic. It's left hemisphere. Emotions. Right. Details. Left. Lists. Left. 
creativity, right hemisphere, language, left hemisphere, general ideas, right hemisphere, imagination, right hemisphere, and music skills are also right hemisphere. Now let's listen and read the text to find out. One brain or two. Think about your brain for a moment. Weighing about three pounds, 1.4 kilograms, it not only controls your other organs, regulates pleasure and pain, hunger and thirst, blood pressure and body temperature, but it also plays a huge part in determining your personal identity through thoughts, memories and emotions. It's an amazing organ, isn't it? Although a brain is often compared to the CPU, central processing unit, in a laptop, in reality, the brain is far superior and far more complex. Underneath a protective skull, the brain appears to be separated into two halves, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, but this is not quite true. Information and instructions pass from one side of the brain to the other through the corpus callosum, about 200 to 250 million nerve fibers. Surprisingly, each hemisphere is responsible for the opposite side of the body. For example, information received from our senses on one side of the body is communicated to the opposite hemisphere of the brain. Some scientists think that the two hemispheres control different abilities and behavior. The left side is more related to logic and analysis. It deals with details. The right is usually considered more creative and imaginative. It prefers general ideas or the big picture and deals with emotions. For artists such as writers, sculptors, and musicians, the right side of their brain is dominant. On the other hand, people in professions that require organization and facts like scientists and accountants more commonly use the left side of the brain. It seems that each hemisphere of the brain has a tendency for certain kinds of function. For example, the left side of the brain may handle the syntax and vocabulary of language, but the right side controls the accent, speed, and intonation of speech. Neurologists have found that if one side of the brain is removed, the other side can take over some of its roles, such as speech, by creating connections or pathways, synapses between brain cells, neurons. Will we ever fully understand our own brains? Probably not. However much research we might do, the human brain is probably capable of much more than we will ever discover. In exercise 2, you are to read the sentences and decide if they are true, false, or doesn't say. Let's check. The human brain controls how the body works. It is true. According to the text, it controls your other organs, regulates pleasure and pain, hunger and thirst, blood pressure and body temperature. A laptop CPU is smaller than the human brain. There is no information in the text, that's why it doesn't say. The two sides of the human brain are not connected. It is false. Because in the text it is said, the brain appears to be separated into two halves, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. But this is not quite true. Information and instructions pass from one side of the brain to the other. The right hemisphere controls the left side of the body. It is true. We have learned from the text that, surprisingly, each hemisphere is responsible for the opposite side of the body. For example, information received from our senses on one side of the body is communicated to the opposite hemisphere of the brain. The left hemisphere is dominant in both scientists and sculptors. It is false, because we see in the text, for artists such as writers, sculptors and musicians, the right side of their brain is dominant. 
Both sides of the brain play a role in our use of language. It is true. According to the text, the left side of the brain may handle the syntax and vocabulary of language, but the right side controls the accent, speed, and intonation of speech. The human brain creates new brain cells all the time. There is no information in the text, that's why it doesn't say. We might never fully understand the human brain. It is true. We see in the text, will we ever fully understand our own brains? Probably not. However much research we might do, the human brain is probably capable of much more than we will ever discover. Now let's watch the video. One brain or two? Although the brain is often compared to the CPU in a computer, in reality, it is far superior and far more complex. Underneath a protective skull, the brain appears to be separated into two halves, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. But this is not quite true. Information and instructions pass from one side of the brain to the other through the corpus callosum, about 200 to 250 million nerve fibers. Surprisingly, each hemisphere is responsible for the opposite side of the body. For example, information received from our senses on one side of the body is communicated to the opposite hemisphere of the brain. Some scientists think that the two hemispheres control different abilities and behavior. The left side is more related to logic and analysis, while the right is usually considered more creative and imaginative. For artists, such as writers, sculptors and musicians, the right side of their brain is dominant. On the other hand, people that require organization and facts, like scientists and accountants, often have a preference for the left side. It seems that each hemisphere of the brain is useful for certain kinds of processes. For example, the left side of the brain may handle the syntax and vocabulary of language, but the right side controls the accent, speed, and intonation of speech. Neurologists have found that if one side of the brain is removed, the other side can take over some of its roles, such as speech, by creating connections or pathways between brain cells. Will we ever fully understand our own brains? Probably not. However much research we might do, the human brain is probably capable of much more than we will ever discover. In exercise 3, you are to answer the questions. What is surprising about the hemispheres of the brain? Each hemisphere is responsible for the opposite side of the body. How do neurologists think the brain repairs itself? They think the brain creates synapses between neurons. And now you are to think about which side of your brain do you think is dominant? Why? I think the right side of my brain is dominant because I am good at writing, drawing and music. In exercise 4, you are to match the highlighted word in the text to their definitions. Let's check. More powerful is dominant. Purpose, function, complicated, complex, deal with, manage, handle. The five physical abilities, touch, taste, sight, smell or hearing senses, controls, regulates. In exercise 5 we are going to talk about question types. Let's remember the rules. General questions or questions with yes-no answers. They begin with an auxiliary or modal verb, is, are, do, does, and etc., which is followed by the subject. We usually answer these questions with yes or no. For example, are you happy? Yes, I am. 
When the main verb of the sentence is in the present simple, we form the question with do or does. In past simple, we form the question with did. For example, does Peter go out often? No, he doesn't. Did you talk to Mark? Yes, I did. We use short answers to avoid repetition of the question asked before. Special questions. Begin with a question word such as who, what, where, when, how, and etc. We put the auxiliary verb is, are, do, does, or modal verb before the subject. For example, who is that girl over there? Whose car is this? Which dress do you like the most? What kind of music do you like? When is the dance competition? Where are you going on holiday this summer? How far is the chemists? And etc. A rhetorical question is a question that expects no answer. Using such questions, the writer aims to attract the reader's interest and make him or her want to read further. They can also summarize the content of a paragraph. Tag questions or disjunctive questions. They are short questions at the end of statements. They are mainly used in speech when we want to confirm something, following information or when we want to find out if something is true or not. They are formed with an auxiliary verb and the appropriate subject pronoun. They take the same auxiliary as in the statement. If there isn't an auxiliary in the statement, they take do or does in present or did in past. For example, Tom plays hockey, doesn't he? After affirmative statements, we use a negative question tag. And after negative statement, we use a positive one. Now let's listen to the examples. Who's she? My teacher. What's this? Where's Claudia from? France. How old are you? I'm 13. When can you come to our house? On Saturday. This is correct, isn't it? I think so. Technology has advanced very quickly, hasn't it? We look like scientists today, don't we? This science fiction film starring Will Smith wasn't very successful, was it? He doesn't have to clean the floors after he bought this gadget, does he? You checked these results, didn't you? Yes, I checked them yesterday. Scientists have never believed that robots will take over the world in the future, have they? Let's take a selfie, shall we? Video calling is a great way to communicate, isn't it? You didn't find this experiment boring, did you? And exercise 5. You are to read the examples and find more examples in the text. Yes, no questions. Does the skull protect the brain? Yes, it does. Special question. What is your earliest memory? Tag questions. Tom can play the guitar, can't he? In the text, there is, it's an amazing organ, isn't it? Rhetorical question. Wouldn't it be great if we never forgot anything? And in the text, there is the other one. Will we ever fully understand our own brains? In exercise 6, we are to define the types of questions. Wouldn't it be great to be happy all the time? It's a rhetorical question. We can learn so much more about the brain, can't we? It's a question. Why do we sleep 
and dream. It's a special question, asking for a reason. Does your brain work better in the morning? It's a general question, yes, no. Now you are to answer these questions. Listen to the model. Wouldn't it be great to be happy all the time? Yes, it would. We can learn so much more about the brain, can't we? Yes, we can. Why do we sleep and dream? I think it's so the body can rest and the brain can organise our thoughts. Does your brain work better in the morning? Yes, it does. Your task is to make your own yes-no special target rhetorical questions. Do you like learning about the brain? Yes, I do. What is your favourite subject? Science. It's interesting, isn't it? Yes, it is. It helps me understand the world. Exercise 7. Listening. You are to listen to two people talking about the human brain. You are to choose the correct answers for the questions. Hey, Max, how are you doing with learning Spanish? It's going okay, Tina, but it takes such a long time to learn another language well. I think the only thing I really know is how to order food at a restaurant. The online videos are good, but I find it hard concentrating with my little brother in the same bedroom. Perhaps I should go to a language school instead, but how long will that take? I wish we were learning Spanish at school instead of French. Well, look, Max, learning another language is not the same as learning your first language as a baby, is it? That was a lot simpler because you just listened to the people around you and copied them without realizing that you are actually learning a language. But if you think about it, that took years too. You don't pick up an advanced vocabulary until you're a lot older. Anyway, don't think of all the time it takes. Just think about the benefits of being able to speak two languages. Such as? I read that people who can speak two or more languages are able to concentrate better. Maybe I should learn Spanish, because I really struggle with that. As soon as I sit down to study something, I start thinking about other things. Chores, Facebook, emails, what I want to do on Saturday. Anything apart from what I'm supposed to be doing. Maybe learning another language would help me pay more attention. Are there any other advantages? How about a bigger brain? There was an experiment in which scientists measured some young soldiers' brains and then taught them some new languages. Afterwards, they measured their brains again and found that a part of their brain, the hippocampus, I think, was actually larger. They also found more pathways between the neurons, which means there's more brain activity. That is impressive. It is. But how about this? Learning a new language may make your brain grow old more slowly. Neurologists have done brain scans on older people that speak two languages, and the scans show that they have brains that work more efficiently than people their same age that only speak one language. In fact, they function like younger people's brains. Wow, so learning a new language can improve my brain in lots of different ways. I think I'll try harder with my Spanish tonight. Why not? It'll do your brain good. And your task is exercise 9. You are to write a short summary of the text. Listen to the model. The brain controls our other organs, regulates pleasure and pain, hunger and thirst, blood pressure and body temperature, as well as determines our personal identity through thoughts, memories and emotions. There are two halves of the brain, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Instructions and information pass from one side to the other through the corpus callosum. Each hemisphere is responsible for the opposite side of the body. The left hemisphere controls logic and analysis, and the right hemisphere controls the imagination and emotions. The left side of the brain handles the syntax and vocabulary of language, and the right side controls the accent, speed and intonation of speech. Neurologists have found that if one half of the brain is removed, the other side can take over some of its functions.